Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk to you about the top wildlife and environmental biology books that changed my life and shaped my view of how I think about wildlife and the environment today. If this is the first video you've seen of mine, I am a wildlife biologist and I talk about how to get into the field of wildlife biology, my views on a bunch of different environmental issues. If you're interested in those kind of topics, click the subscribe button below. I'm going to be giving away a wildlife book for you guys on social media. You can enter if you stay till the end of this video and I'll let you know how to enter. For those of you who really, really love wolves, it'll be a good one to enter. So this one right here, if you're a field biologist in Western North America, you probably know this one like the back of your hand. This is the Bible for biologists in the field. It is a field guide, Sibley's Birds West. Um, they made so many different versions of this. There's also some that come with all the birds of North America in them, but this has been my Bible since I became a field biologist on identifying my birds. Honestly, nowadays there's just apps for everything. So I actually use iBird app now, but um, I think I'm old enough now to say back in the day before we had smartphones and we're working out in the field, we used Sibley and they're laid out the best way. So they have all of the birds that you're going to find in Western North America. So you're able to quickly check the range map and it's grouped up by types. So like warblers, hawks, this one has been my guide to the field for the last eight years. The next one. So you can probably tell how much adventure this book has seen by the fact the covers are all ripped up. And if you actually went through it, there's like South American squished mosquitoes in here because I've read this one so many times when I was down in South America. It's also covered in mud because I did drop it in a few uh, swaps when I was out working with the cougars. So this one is Diane Fossey's Gorillas in the Mist. If I read this one, objectively i don't think i would have enjoyed it as much as the fact that i was reading this when i was out on my very first field job it is a really good book but it can get pretty technical about um, the actual gorillas so if you're really interested in gorilla research and what it's like to be a field biologist at a remote field station read gorillas in the mist so diane fossey is pretty much at the same level as like jane goodall as far as in popular culture if you don't know who she is already there's more to this story than just being out in the field. There's actually quite a very tragic ending to this story and what happened to Diane Fossey. So the reason why I put this on one of my life-changing books is that this was actually really inspiring to me to get into a field career. When I was out in the field in Bolivia, I had not even known that this was a job that people could have until I was out on that job. To read Grills in the Mist and to hear about another woman that was doing these crazy adventurous things with wildlife it was really nice just to see that someone else has done it before so that's why i list it on one of my life-changing books list the next book i'm going to talk about on my life-changing book list there is two books on this list from the same author but this one is a fiction book desert solitaire by edward abbey so i listened to the audiobook of this book pretty much every single week to fall asleep actually because I find it so comforting. So the main character of Desert Solitaire is actually a park ranger in Arches National Park in Utah and he talks about his experiences as a ranger out in that park and all of the horrible things that tourism is actually doing to nature. And so he talks about the disconnect that humans are having from wild landscapes. I call him like the radical John Muir because he was really preaching that people need to go out and actually get into the back country, go out with a backpack on your back, follow a quiet little trail and spend some time in nature instead of going to these huge tourist centers and then leaving. So this one was a really good one and it helped me form some ideas about how I think about in the environment, how I think about tourism and how I think about backcountry experiences. The Monkey Wrench Gang. So this is another one that's also all covered in mud because I brought this one backpacking and on field jobs with me so many times. I've read this book quite a bit. So this is one of my favorite books of all time. And this one has really helped me figure out what my view on environmental issues are and my view of human development on natural landscapes. So anyone who's read this book probably thinks um, that's a little bit silly to say because this is actually quite an extreme book. It's about a fictional account of a group of eco-terrorists in Utah 
that are um, protesting the development of new roads and dams that are destroying the natural region, the desert ecosystems. It's a really fun book that doesn't take itself too seriously. It's quite funny and it shows the different views, sometimes extreme and sometimes hypocritical, that environmentalists have. And it makes you think about what you think about new development and environmental conservation. All right, the next book I want to quickly talk about is Where the Wild Things Were, Life, Death, and Ecological Wreckage in a Land of Vanishing Predators. So, so this one is another good read related to more of a nonfiction stance on biology. And the basic gist of this one is this book argues that top predators and carnivores like cougars, wolves, bears are actually one of the most essential pieces of landscape ecology. We absolutely need to preserve those species if we ever want to have any sort of healthy ecological system. We have to support these top predators. So it pretty much echoes exactly how I feel about top predators someone who's definitely studied and specialized in carnivores. So that one's a good read if you're interested in more of the scientific background of why large predators are necessary. Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg. This is not a environmental and wildlife specific one, but it's more discussing women in the workplace, especially in male focused workplaces. Lean In is a good one, especially for women looking to increase their confidence in the workplace, especially scientists, engineers. So the last book that I'm going to talk about is The Homeward Wolf by Kevin Van Tegum. And so this book I'm actually going to be giving away on my Instagram page. You can find that at at vegan below zero on Instagram. If you go to my post with the homeward wolf, you can tell by the icon has the homeward wolf in the photo. You can tag some friends and fellow wildlife lovers to enter to win this book and a few other little wildlife, wildlife freebies. And so the homeward wolf is about uh, the journey of wolves as a species through Western North America. It goes into the history of wolves in North America and some of the challenges that wolves have faced both in the public eye and how we actually think of wolves and predators in society and also boots on the ground and how their habitat has changed over time. So it's a good read from a local biologist here in Alberta. The contest ends on April 3rd at five o'clock Mountain Standard Time. So go in and enter now if you are watching this before that time. We'll leave a comment on what is your favorite environmental slash wildlife related book so that um, other people can see some other suggestions too. And uh, thank you for watching.